As many of you know, I have anemia and I've been fighting this for quite some time. Edwina Hawkinson, a medical herbalist I have had the honour to get to know and to learn from, suggested Christopher Headley's iron tonic for my anemia. His recipe is quite simple but takes a couple of weeks in process. First step is to soak equal amounts of fresh nettle tops and organic apricots in a decent red wine with a little bit of orange peel added. And I always purchase unwaxed fruit as I do use the peel quite often. However, I had none in this on this occasion. This then sits for two weeks before straining and it has to be kept in a cool dark space and the dosage is one or two tablespoons twice a day. As I am very anemic and feel like I have vertigo at times, I am also going to rustle up a tonic that will be ready faster. Herbal iron tonic is great for increasing iron levels whilst also improving the health of our cardiovascular system, allowing for efficient transportation of these rich minerals around the body. Anemia is pretty common and sadly I'm one of those rare people I have golden O egg blood and they can't find a blood match anywhere in the country for me in order to do a transfusion. I am getting frequent updates however and I'm also allergic to iron preparations that they can prescribe. It used to just make me feel rough, but in 2010, I had an iron infusion and ended up going into anaphylaxis. And now, even the pills cause that immune response. The medical team is keeping in touch with me and keeping me updated on that process. However, I wanted to take things into my own hands and do something in the meantime. Being a trainee herbalist, herbs were my first port of call. And for my own curiosity, it's a great opportunity for me to actually check how efficient th these recipes are because I'm getting blood tests very frequently so they can see where I'm at and what's going on with my body so that will allow for frequent feedback and a lot of people with anemia find iron preparations too harsh if you have levels as low as mine please do seek further medical advice or the guidance of a medical herbalist before treating it yourself Iron is a crucial mineral and essential component in the protein haemoglobin, which helps to transport oxygen, for example, to our organs and tissues. Our muscles store iron for when they require it also, and it helps play an important role in all Iron deficiency is so common that it has, in a way, been normalised to the degree that most people don't understand how important it is medically, and it is no laughing matter. The initial symptoms of weakness, fatigue, feeling cold in the extremities are a walk in the park compared to the long-term effects of anemia. Headaches and dizziness are probably some of the more earlier common symptoms experienced. Women also tend to notice their nails go more brittle and their hair lacks that luster, strength and glow. Anemia can be short or long-term and there are many causes, therefore the signs and symptoms do vary. Other symptoms can include irregular heartbeat, shortness of breath, heavy breathing, which I suffer from, and regularly cut from my blocks, as it doesn't sound very nice, and also chest pain. Anemia is not only something that can occur suddenly, it can also be congenital, so present at birth. It tends to occur when our blood doesn't have enough red blood cells, it may not make enough, or you may have heavy menstrual blood loss, or your body can even destroy them. Red blood cells carry oxygen around our body and carbon dioxide in order to expel it. The body requires iron, B12, folate and many other nutrients to do this successfully. So we do see a lot of iron deficient anemia. Your bone marrow is where we make our haemoglobin and we see this type of anemia in pregnant women, those who have had sudden blood loss due to trauma, digestive complaints such as ulcers, cancers and even some pain medications can be a cause. There's also vitamin deficiency anemia, known as pernicious anemia. Inflammatory anemia can occur, and we see this in people with HIV or AIDS, cancer, arthritis, kidney disease, uh, conditions such as Crohn's, as these can all interfere with the production of red blood cells. And there's also a plastic anemia, which is caused by bone marrow diseases. Hemolytic anemias, where the body destroys red blood cells, and sickle cell anemia, and so on. Left untreated, anemia can be dangerous. I have microcytic anemia and this is where my red blood cells are smaller than they should be because there wasn't enough haemoglobin. And this can actually cause tissue hypoxia for example if left untreated. 
So I really need to get iron into my body ASAP. So I'm cutting out tannins such as coffee and I need to increase my vitamin C to maximise on my absorption. Personally, my diet's pretty spot on. I eat paleo, so there's not many iron inhibiting foods that I need to cut out personally. I'm currently making the herbal iron tonic recipe from the Berkeley Herbal Centre. It will also aid in general health and the health of my organs and tissues. It contains fresh nettle leaf and nettle is such an amazing medicine. It has all the nutrients our body needs, high in iron, vitamin C and also all those trace minerals that I want too. Yellow dock root is a bitter herb and bitters are crucial for the liver and the digestive system. It's a good blood tonic in its own right. Dandelion, you will hear me talk of often, is one of my most admired and loved medicines. And I'm using the root here. It's another bitter herb and enhances the liver's ability to cleanse our blood. It's jam-packed with nutrients and I believe it was detrimental when removed from our diets and seasonal diets alongside nettle. Dock root is another amazing herb. I always team bear dock with dandelion as dandelion shifts while bear dock is great at breaking and cleansing those blockages. It balances blood sugar, supports the kidneys and also aids the liver. Astragalus root is a great adaptogen. It helps with fatigue, will support my adrenals whilst I'm waiting for them iron levels to up themselves, stimulates hemoglobin production and enhances kidney function. Rose hips are high in vitamin C. It also is a mucilage. The rose hips will enhance the body's ability to absorb the nutrients from the other herbs and molasses my granddad tortured me with when I was a child and how I miss those simpler days now. It's a natural sweetener when mixed with rose hip flavour and it takes the edge off all those bitter herbs and it's also naturally iron rich in its own right. I've included the quantities in the captions on the video. Add all the herbs bar the nettle and molasses into the last few moments. I let it simmer for another 5 to 8 minutes after adding those in. Allow to fully cool before you strain into whatever you are using as your vessel for storage. And dosage is a tablespoon 1 to 3 times per day. I have spilt the molasses all over my cooker as you can see here. I'm not the cleanest or tidiest cook when I get going. I always splash it out the side when I'm stirring. <laughs> I chose dark amber glass bottles for my storage as that will protect it further. My daughter was my little helper in this vlog as she held things steady for me. And I hope you enjoyed these recipes as much as we have making them.